Um, really excited to talk to you guys today about creating memorable commerce experiences. Um, and this topic um, is near and dear to my heart, one, because Adobe is the creative company, um, and two, because um, I think it is uh, one of the best ways for all of you to compete in the market today. A bit about that. I head up our commerce strategy and product marketing team. Um, I also have the pleasure of managing our technical documentation and user guides team. Um, so I have a bit of two sides of the same coin uh, in my organization at Adobe. Um, it's a phenomenal team and uh, we're happy to serve our customers every day. So what you will learn, so why experience matters um, and actually how that as well as personalization drive business results. Uh, how do you get started? Uh, and then who does this well? Um, and I have largely, um, you know, larger customer examples, um, not to terrify anyone, uh, but to show you that um, no one's really, you know, figured this out completely. Um, and you really have to kind of crawl, walk, and run through this process. Um, and so I'll give you examples of companies that are at various stages of implementing this. All right, uh, so I do want to set the stage a bit. So as distributors, you guys have um, a myriad of challenges. Um, I've listed a few here that I think are probably the, the most um, influential ones in your day to day. Uh, you know, buyer expectations are changing. Uh, and I know um, that Karthik talked a bit about this earlier. A couple of the other speakers have referenced it as well. Um, if you look at Gen Z, um, that is currently the largest buying cohort. They're ages 7 through 24. Some of you are in the audience today. Um, they will be the largest buyers of B2B uh, technology and the largest buyers of products uh, by 2025. They already influence uh, the most buying power of any generation um, ever. And that's critically important for everyone to understand because they are uh, the TikTok generation. They are digital native. Um, they want to get information quickly. Uh, they want to feel a part of the brand. Um, thank you, Eric, for teeing me up with some amazing content about building your brand. Um, we'll touch on similar concepts from a different lens um, in this talk, uh, but that generation um, is critically important to reach. Um, your biggest digital disruptor, uh, Amazon Business, they're coming after everyone. Uh, but guess what? Their site sucks. Um, you know, no offense to them, but if you've ever shopped on Amazon Business, um, for your business, it's not easy. There's so much information. It's hard to use. But guess what? It's personalized, it remembers you, it knows the types of things that you buy, and it recommends things based on what you do buy, and so it makes it easier every time you use it, so you keep coming back. So we're gonna talk a bit about how you do that for your, for your own site. Um, threats from your own manufacturers going direct to consumers are some who already are uh, post-pandemic. That was a huge trend that we saw. Um, so you need to create value. You need to create brand loyalty. You need to create repeat purchases for your brand um, and for your business. Um, how do you do that? You help them find things faster. You help them get what they need um, and you show them that you care. Uh, does that sound familiar, Eric? I think you were talking about that earlier. Um, your own internal data challenges. So we're going to talk a bit when we get to um, sort of how you get started with personalization. Uh, it's okay if you have data challenges. You can solve those along your personalization journey and still get something out of it in return in terms of revenue. And then finally, aging technology. Um, I think that's something that we all deal with. Um, there's a lot of things you can't get rid of in your tech stack, and you just have to figure out how to manage through those. Um, we're not going to touch on that today, but I do feel like that's been talked about um, a bit already today. So your business goals. You're trying to grow revenue. You're trying to increase engagement and conversion, and ultimately you're trying to drive loyalty and repeat purchases. So how do you do that? You do that through experience. 
um, it matters, and it actually does drive your business. It's proven. If you look at experience and companies who focus on experience, there's a myriad of different metrics. Pick your favorite um, up on this screen. There's plenty of them. Um, depending upon how you measure your business, no matter which way you measure your business, one of these, um, I'm sure, catches your eye. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the one and a half times employee satisfaction. Uh, in this, uh, the age of the great resignation, having satisfied employees is critically important. It's important to retain them, it's important to keep them. They help then in turn drive satisfied customers because they already know the information. You're not retraining people. Uh, so that's one of my favorite stats. Um, and then of course, 3.1 times repeat visitors. Um, we all know repeat visitors are a critical goal um, for every business. Um, and so if you can multiply it by three, that's huge. Um, that's a huge repeat buyer rate. So when you think about personalization, um, and you know, there's four different phases here. Uh, basic personalization, which is the black bar. Um, and you can see just that by itself. Um, and we're going to talk about examples um, of that. Most e-commerce platforms have um, what I consider basic personalization out of the box. Um, and there you're looking at 5.2% you know, improvement in conversion, 8.1% in revenue per visitor, and 8.3% in average order value. I Show of hands, any of you, if you could get that improvement in those three metrics two weeks from today, would you do it? Yeah, exactly. Of course you would. It's a no-brainer. So we're going to talk to you about how to, how to do that very rapidly. Um, the second is uh, really segment-based personalization. Many of you might already do this uh, just by virtue of um, showing different information to individual companies that you work with, um, whether that are you know large companies um, or you know collections of individual buyers, um, and you can see some great results from that type of activity. Uh, the third is micro segment based personalization. So this is you might have um, a segment. Um, of customers, or you might actually have an account um, that you treat differently, um, and then you want to actually dive into the individual personas within that account and treat each of them differently. Um, so I might have a company that has five different divisions, um, and each division buys differently. They have different sets of products that are their standards, um, and they purchase on different frequencies. How do I make sure that I'm talking to them about the right products at the right times during their cycles. I can actually use that method of personalization. And then finally, one-to-one -one personalization. This is everyone's ultimate goal, and I will tell you it's hard. Um, it's hard to do. It takes a long time. Um, the results are staggering and amazing, um, and we have customers at Adobe that are already doing one-to-one -one personalization. Most of them um, are large retail brands. Some of them um, are small and medium-sized businesses who have chosen that as their only way to go to market. So it's not about size, it's not about people, it's about business goals. Um, and I'm not telling you that that is the, the you know, ideal future for every one of you, because it probably isn't. Um, but it is something that you can aspire to over time, and you can all achieve should you choose. So where do you start? So I love AI-powered features. And some of you are probably like, well, Tori, that's not personalization. Well, guess what? Yes, it is. You're just letting the machine do the work for you in the background. They are creating that personalized experience. You're curating it by tagging products with your, inside of your PIM that can be used uh, for this particular feature set. Um, and also, you're putting the right content blocks on your site so that this can be served. It's a great way to start basic personalization. 
this example here, um, we, uh, we use Luma Smart um, as our personalization brand when we do demos. And this actually happens to be um, a B2B example. So this particular customer that's looking at Luma Smart, they buy in bulk um, because they're selling in their retail store. Um, and you'll see in the middle the add to your assortment. So this is the way for Luma Smart to try to get this particular retail brand to add more products to what they're already buying from them. Um, and they're doing this in a very uh, simplistic way with this product carousel. But it starts to create that customer relationship. It starts to show this brand that's coming to Luma Smart, hey, I'm thinking about you, and these are the things that I think go with the items on the bottom that I know you need to restock. So it's a great way to start building trust. It's a great way to start building up uh, that happy path, so to speak, with your customer, um, and really create that brand love that Eric was talking about earlier. Um, you can also see this looks very consumery. It doesn't have to. Um, this is a lifestyle brand, Luma Smart. Uh, so they like really bright colors. Um, of course, I'm going to show you some examples here in a little bit uh, that are much more manufacturing based. Um, and you're not going to see purple on the screen. <laughs> um, but I like this example because it's bold, it's bright, and it catches your attention to see the different elements on the page. The, the next phase is really basic personalization. Um, and this is, you know, how do I deliver to you, the person, the buyer, the browser, the procurement person, whatever persona I'm targeting, how do I deliver to you um, an experience that's based on what I know about you? And this does start your journey for making sure that you have data in a way that you can use and capture it um, for your marketing efforts. Um, and we talk about a lot about omni-channel. Um, I like to use unified experiences, and we're going to talk about those next. But this is your first journey into that foray. When you start with basic personalization, you're really looking to make sure that when someone goes online and has an experience with you, that you're following up with them in the other ways that they already communicate with you. So if they're signed up for email, for example, and they come online and they're looking at one of the new products that you sh chose to show them um, in that product recommendations carousel, you're following up with an email with more information about that product, links to that great content that you already have about that product, um, and also possibly if you have specialized sellers related to those products, information about who they can talk to to learn more. So it's about creating that 360 degree experience for the customer with the ways they already work with you. We're not trying to spam anybody like I did in 1999. And then the last one is really this unified, personalized experience. Um, and this is really how do you fully surround the customer. So today, they may only communicate with you via email and website and sales rep. How do you actually drive additional touch points with that customer? How do you use potentially paid media or target retargeting to actually go back to that person? This gets much more sophisticated when we get into this space. And again, you have to have the right data repository to get to the information that you need. And of course, it requires budget to actually go out from a marketing perspective and execute. But the thing that's interesting here, you'll see a lot of these are things that you control. And that's the first step in unifying experiences, is making sure that each of these touch points builds upon each other and doesn't create contradiction. So if I go and receive um, an email from you about a new product, and then go to your website on my mobile phone to do some research, I'm seeing the same information that I saw on that email with additional detail, with more links to content, with someone to call, 
with examples, ratings and reviews if that's appropriate for your industry. And I may actually download your app on my phone and that's how I may then begin to start reading additional reviews, actually making a purchase. Um, many of you probably are seeing most of your purchases still happening on desktop. That's fine. Um, we know that those digital natives are going to come to you soon, <laughs> and they are going to want to purchase on every surface possible. Um, so please make sure that your purchasing experience is equal across each of those screen sizes. Um, and having that great photography is wonderful. Just remember, sometimes folks are looking on it on a teeny little screen in their hand. And so it's great to have vibrant, rich images, but you need to be able to make sure that they can actually adequately zoom in, rotate, and look at those things on their phone enough to make a decision. That will drive up your mobile conversion rates. And then finally, we know buy online, pick up in store is a huge trend. Um, by the way, I know everybody thinks, oh, it's going away. We're post-COVID. Everybody's going back to the store. It's not going away. 40% um, of all purchases are still made through buy online, pick up in store related to retail. Um, if you look at that in the B2B space, um, it is a little bit less. It's roughly sitting at about 30% where it's buy online, pick up at warehouse or pick up at branch. Um, but it's still a hefty percentage that you have to take into consideration. All right, so let's get into some examples. Um, the first one, uh, we work with L'Oreal. Um, they actually have uh, a really cool surround strategy. Uh, they actually, you know, obviously ultimately are targeting consumers, but they have um, online properties for licensed beauty professionals, independent store operators, and also um, sales reps for their actual company. And one of the cool things that they have is an online experience called State RDA that links all of these things together. And they do that to create an ecosystem, to create that brand surround across every touch point that that whole entire ecosystem comes in contact with. And you can see, um, we work with Gabby Helms, who's the head of their uh, e-commerce at Salon Centric, which is the brand. And this online initiative essentially gives their sellers access to the independent store operators, who then in turn are providing this to their licensed beauticians to make individual purchases. And so for those store operators, they've given budget to each of those different beauty salon uh, professionals so that they can actually buy their supplies on their own. And all of that gets rolled up to that store and they can see everything that's been bought and that gets sent to the sales rep um, at, at L'Oreal. And then they can help in turn create this best ecosystem for, for their customers. A couple of other great examples, um, Selco. Uh, so Selco, um, they are doing basic personalization. Um, and their personalization is all based on post-login experience. Um, they're a very large uh, building material distributor in the UK. Um, and they um, are, are not equipped uh, with personnel um, or funds to do more than just basic personalization. But you can see they've increased their conversion rates by 23%. Um, their website's actually 300% faster. That's because they moved to a PWA front end. And finally, an 82% increase um, in revenue, all from the, the very few things that they've done. Um, and they are integrated uh, to Microsoft Dynamics on the back end. Um, another cool thing, uh, they have a material calculator. Uh, so this calculator actually allows um, their uh, independent contractors to come on and estimate how much material they need. Um, and then it automatically will place all of that in the cart for them and they can purchase it right away. 
carrier. Um, so this is a part of Watsco. Um, you can see uh, no purple on this site. Um, <laughs> carrier is selling uh, large HVAC systems. Um, and they really wanted something that was um, mobile friendly, um, highly portable. Um, this website is used uh, by their folks out in the field who are literally on site um, at customers' uh, sites working on their HVAC systems. Um, and they have a ton of great uh, features, including support for multiple languages, um, in-store pickup and delivery, and custom catalogs for all of their individual customer sets. Um, and you can see they're quite large, um, but even with that, they've seen a 300% increase in transactions. Um, they've grown uh, with Adobe from a about a $250 million business uh, to a billion dollar business. Um, and then just a, a few more um, additional examples. Um, the, the one other one that I wanted to point out is uh, Unilever. Uh, so Unilever, this is their food service direct site. Uh, this is a fully headless site. It is React based. Um, and it is specifically designed um, for those very fast, uh, very quick order scenarios in the field. Um, super exciting uh, to see their 40% increase in sales. And that's all I had. I have two minutes to take questions if anybody has any. Yes. Wow, um, since 99, what's the biggest transition I've seen in e-commerce? Um, I, I think the, the biggest thing that I've seen is just the evolution of the experience you can actually give online. Uh, today, you know, you can actually go online, you can scan your room, you can configure um, an entire living room uh, just using your mobile phone. It's crazy to me. Um, I remember back um, in 1999, I was working at Dell, and um, we were, you know, selling uh, this rudimentary online configurator. Um, and now, you know, you can you can literally scan your desk um, and drag c computer components onto your desk to see what it's gonna look like. Um, that's crazy, it's crazy to me to see the amount of technology to sort of bring the physical into the virtual. Yes. Yes, so examples of programs that create um, AI experiences. Um, so I feel like someone from Adobe must have asked this question. Um, inside of Adobe Commerce, we actually have um, product recommendations um, that are AI powered um, and fuel uh, those product recommendations. Um, we call it a uh, fix it and forget it. Um, you just stick those up on your site. Um, the algorithm works in the background. Should you need uh, human intervention, there is always uh, ways to do that, but largely it is meant to go drive incremental revenue on your site uh, without you having to lift a finger. Um, the other is Live Search, which is our AI-powered search engine, um, which actually helps learn what people are searching for on your site. Um, it will also return information to you to help you optimize um, the types of things that you're merchandising um, so that you can see uh, top searches in real time. Um, you can also use that information to surface um, additional merchandising based on how that person is searching on your site. Um, it also will give you um, real-time um, intelligence to the customer um, as they start to type. So it will surface things based on, um, you know, sort of search as you type, search as you go uh, type features. Uh, there's also tons of additional um, third-party tools um, to drive personalization. Um, also within the broader Adobe suite, um, we have Adobe Target. Um, that is our uh, sort of um, mama bear of personalization, if you will. Um, you can start small with things like A-B testing um, and then go big with a complete and end-to-end and -end personalized experience through Adobe Target. 
All right. Thanks, everybody.